meine Damen und Herren, sehr herzlichen Dank für diese liebe Einführung und für Sie alle Happy Birthday, äh, 20 Jahre im äh, Dienst der Bürger im Herzen von Europa. Das sagen wir ja immer von uns Luxemburgern, aber Trier liegt ja nicht so weit äh, von Luxemburg weg, auch, auch im Herzen <lacht> Europas. Ähm, das ist schon eine äh, Leistung. We are all familiar, of course, with uh, the efforts the European Union has done in the last years. Mutual recognition is uh, a theme which everybody knows in civil and criminal matters. And, uh, well, uh, we could do law in Brussels, but if this law doesn't spread and if it is not implemented, by people who know about this law, and if it isn't understood by the citizen, then the law is not very efficient. And you have done the work to make it efficient and to allow that it is uh, implemented. And I know what enormous work is behind of this has been and will be in the future, and I thank you very much uh, for this one. Now, uh, whatever we undertake, uh, even uh, if there is a very high quality of our legal systems, the citizens surely will continue to go to court and um, there will surely be conflicts and, uh, 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 of interpretation. Um, so even if I plead more and more for mediation and an alternative dispute resolution that does not uh, eliminate the fact that the courts are the centerpiece of our judicial uh, activity. And the role of the judge has changed also in an important way uh, during the last uh, decades. Um, the judge is not anymore a national judge. The judge is a European Union judge, a judge who applies European Union law. And that is why it is so important that he is independent and efficient, not only for our member states, but for the European Union as a whole. It is also essential for our citizens because they have to feel secure and they have to know that if a legal dispute arises, well, it will be resolved by an independent and efficient judicial system. Independence of the judiciary is also essential for the well-functioning of the European Union. You know, it is indispensable for the efficient application of the EU law, and that is why in Article 47 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights is written that every citizen and every legal entity uh, has the right to go to an independent court to ensure that EU law is respected. The independence of the judiciary is also very important for the mutual trust between judicial authorities of member states and for the smooth functioning of EU instruments built on mutual recognition. You are certainly aware that this year twice the European Commission had to intervene in a very serious situation involving the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary, once in Hungary and once in Romania. And we are still following attentively the developments in Hungary and waiting for the rulings of the Court of Justice. Uh, in the two cases, the, court, the Commission has uh, raised uh, the, uh, uh, ju the independence of the judiciary, judges' retirement age, uh, and the independence of the Hungarian Data Protection Authority. You have certainly noticed in these uh, cases 
that the Commission doesn't shy away from acting when there is an attack on the rule of law or a breach of EU legislation, irrespective of the political colour of the government. But we have also, while dealing with these cases, been confronted with many questions. Is the EU equipped to deal with situations that put at risk the rule of law in our member state? A rule of law which in the end is not about institutions, but also and mainly about human beings, about citizens. Currently, the only means at our disposal is Article 7. Under Article 7 procedure, you know, the voting rights of a member state can be temporarily suspended, and that's why some uh, describe it as a nuclear option. It's clear that Article 7 procedure can only be a last resort. We should look at other ways to defend the rule of law when it is under threat. For Romania, the Commission used the cooperation and verification mechanism. For Hungary, political pressure and infringement procedures. So the critics say that the Commission is only targeting relatively minor technical issues in its political statements and infringement proceedings because it has to cling to the law, cannot do otherwise. But what about the big picture? What about the rule of law in general? What about the independence of the judiciary as a principle and an applied one? Now, I do agree with those statements. Yes, the Commission has to play its role as guardian of treaties. We have to go after the breaches of EU law by means of infringement procedures, even when those are seemingly technical issues. However, there are two lessons drawn from the experiences with the controversial situations in Hungary and Romania. First, we always need to tackle those problems with independence and objectivity without entering into any party political debate. The respect for rule of law has nothing to do with the political party in power. It must be always over and above. And we all know that the lack of rule of law means what, what, what the lack of rule of law means for the citizen. We keep alive the memories of totalitarian regimes from distant or not so distant past in Europe. And we also know that small violations of the rule of law can lead to a complete denial of justice for citizens. Second lesson learned, we lack efficient and effective mechanisms in the EU to enforce the rule of law more generally and more systematically. Today everybody mentions the situation in Hungary and in Romania, but are we sure that the situation like this will not happen again in another EU country in the near future? And let's be honest, the EU needs to face what I call its Copenhagen dilemma. What do I mean by this? The Copenhagen criteria on the rule of law and on democracy are very clear and strong in the accession process of a new member state. But once a country has joined the European Union, we appear not to have any instruments to check whether the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary still command respect. Now this is, at least for me, a question of concern, and I know for many in this room too. President Barroso, in his speech on the State of the Union, had addressed the importance of the rule of law for the functioning of the European Union 
as a whole. And indeed, our European justice is built on mutual recognition and mutual trust. But how can we expect our citizens and our courts to respect court decisions issued in another member state in the same way as in their national state if there are doubts over whether all 27 member states apply comparable standards. And this is one of the reasons why we are pursuing an agenda on procedural rights. This is one of the reasons why we have put the victims' rights in criminal proceedings on the agenda. Minimum standards, ladies and gentlemen, for maximum trust. But recent events show that we need more to go to the root of the problem outside party political controversy and with a firm anchoring of the debate on the European values which are enshrined in the treaty. Independence, of course, is important, is essential, but so is efficiency. In some member states, a final court decision, even for minor issues, can take 10 years to be issued. In some cases, justice becomes so expensive in time and in money that some see it as denial of justice, can we still pretend that in those cases the citizen of the European Union enjoys judicial protection? An independent and efficient justice system safeguards economic and social life. It is involved when starting business, when getting a license, when enforcing a contract, in all disputes with public administration on taxation and social security, and so on and so forth. And above all, an independent and effective judiciary offers to citizens this very needed feeling of security. The analysis of the efficiency of national judicial systems of member states provides evidence of a direct correlation between the efficiency of justice in one hand and the growth of GDP on the other hand. Most countries in which courts handle incoming cases rapidly and adequately and dispose of such cases within a reasonable time frame are countries with higher growth rates. On the other hand, the experience of the Commission in programme countries has demonstrated that severe economic problems are also reflected in substantial weaknesses of the judicial systems. Regarding the programme countries, we began with uh, analysis and action in two member states, Greece and Portugal, in 2011. We also covered Ireland particularly on the issue of the independence of legal professions. In Greece and in Portugal, the Commission proposed concrete actions for the improvement of the judicial case processing, clearing case backlogs, introducing e-justice applications, collecting justice statistics and training judicial uh, staff, and the utilization of the alternative dispute resolution um, is also encouraged in order to uh, change existing cultures of dispute and taking cases out of the formal court system. I would at that moment uh, underline for those who are not yet very much aware that the Commission is really believing that mediation and other alternative dispute resolution methods are important not only for programme countries but for the entire European Union, because those systems give businesses the option of setting their differences out of court. It saves time, money. It can also solve problems between businesses, employers and employees, landlords and tenants in a constructive way. And um, at the same time, we all know that an agreement reached by the way of mediation is binding and can therefore be enforced. 
mediation is also um, positive because it is more likely to avoid future litigation, which is, of course, a great burden on taxpayers. In addition to what I have said, a proper functioning of the single market requires that judicial systems of the member states work together coherently, effectively. I repeat, the national courts and the national judicial systems are courts of all citizens and of all businesses. And the inefficiency of the justice system in one member state impacts negatively not only on this member state's growth rate, but also on the functioning of the whole single market and thereby on the economy of all member states. In short, the efficiency of justice is a priority for European-wide growth. We, as the European Union, need to stand firm on our values and on the rule of law. Our justice is non-partisan, our values have no political parties, colors. They are the basis on which we all stand, on which we all can build. And I would like to tell you and your collaborators and all those hundreds and hundreds of people who come to this place here in order to work together, in order to build a better European justice system that the work which ERA has played to bring together legal experts from across Europe uh, is essential for building our area of justice Europe-wide. And it will be even more emblematic next year because next year we are going to have the European Year of citizens. And in the end, it is all about citizens. It is about human beings to feel at ease wherever they are in the European Union, knowing that, yes, they have their rights, and yes, those rights are being put in practice. So we need well-trained judicial professionals, which can create that Europe where citizens feel protected wherever they happen to be, wherever they happen to go. So your work is essential, and I look forward in 2013 for you really coming in, for explaining that the European Year of Citizen as an instrument is very important because citizens must know in the end that they have their rights that a well-functioning justice cross-border is a well-functioning citizenship as we have it inscribed in our treaties and as we have the responsibility to make it function. So thank you for what you have done in the past. Thank you already for what you are going to do and happy anniversary. Very many thanks, uh, dear Commissioner Reding, for your very kind words of encouragement. And I can already promise that we will do our very best uh, to fulfill your expectations. I hope we will come close to it. But uh, as we have uh, chosen the citizen as the guiding theme of our anniversary Congress, this can already be an indication uh, that we really are prepared to respond. Thank you for having shared a number of very important concerns uh, to which you have to react, and thank you also for this impartial role, or this role of an impartial safeguard uh, of the rule of law uh, which uh, you are playing in the Commission and uh, to which uh, we all, all together, I think, wish you every success. Uh, you have very kindly allowed two, one or two questions, so I'm inviting the floor to ask one or two questions. Who would like to start? Yes, please. We, please wait for the microphone.
Danke. Bitte Ihren Namen zuerst sagen. Das Mikro muss abgestellt werden. Hoffentlich jetzt können Sie schon mich hören. Ja, ich bin die Deputy State Secretary von Ungarn und eines würde ich äh, äh, gerne sagen. Der Dataprozess ist noch bis den heutigen Tag nicht beendet gegen Ungarn. Also das wird nur im Februar passieren, wie ich es weiß. Und äh, ich würde ganz leise nur sagen, äh, Vorurteil über Ungarn so sagen, dass dieser Prozess nicht beendet ist. Ich halte es so, äh, ich weiß, dass im Rahmen äh, des Europäischen Union wir sprechen lieber über Solidarität. Und ich würde mich freuen, wenn diese Solidarität könnte auf uns auch, äh, könnte auch uns gehören. Und äh, Urteil wäre sehr gut so sagen, wenn rechtskräftige Verurteile haben könnten über in diesen Angelegenheit. Danke. Ja, die Ungarn-Sache ist ja keine schöne. Und ich sage leider, dass die passiert ist. Wir haben ja lange gewarnt, ehe die neue Verfassung verabschiedet wurde. Und wir haben das ja nicht nur als Europäische Union gemacht. Das wurde ja auch vom Europarat und von seiner äh, Venedig-Kommission, die ja über Verfassungen wacht, sehr klar und deutlich äh, gesagt. Ähm, einige Sachen wurden geändert, insbesondere die, die damit zusammenhielten, hingen, dass Ungarn Geld bekam. Die wurden sehr schnell geändert. Äh, die Elemente aber, die mit äh, Justiz zusammenhängen, äh, sind noch in einer schwierigen Mache. Inzwischen äh, habe ich mich äh, doch erleichtert gefühlt, dass das ungarische Gericht die Sache mit äh, dem Rentenalter, dem vorgezogenen Rentenalter für Richter auch verurteilt hat. Also wir haben nicht nur, dass die Kommission äh, vor dem Europäischen Gerichtshof in diesem Sache äh, der Unabhängigkeit und der Altersdiskriminierung ein Verfahren anhängen hat. Auch die, die ungarische Gerichtsbarkeit ist in diesem Sache in dieselbe Richtung gegangen. Übrigens, die, 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 die Problematik mit der Unabhängigkeit der Datenschutzbehörde ist eine Problematik, die in 27 Mitgliedstaaten verfolgt wird, wenn notwendig. In dieser Woche hat, das Europäische, hat der Europäische Gerichtshof Österreich ähm, verurteilt, auch in dieser Sache. Ich denke, dass äh, das Europäische äh, Gericht auch in Sachen Ungarn eine ähnliche Entscheidung treffen wird. Ich würde mir wünschen, dass wir in Europa nicht weitere Ungarn-Probleme in anderen Ländern haben werden. Vielen Dank. Katrin Kessejong. Katrin Kessejong, Collège européen de Paris. Madame le Commissaire, je suis entièrement d'accord avec tout ce que vous avez dit. Il y a un manque, me semble-t-il, c'est les actions de groupe. Vous n'avez rien dit sur cette question. Il me semble que les actions de groupe aujourd'hui en Europe sont une nécessité pour le citoyen qui est aussi un consommateur et qui a aussi des droits, non seulement juridiques, politiques, mais aussi économiques, et qu'aujourd'hui, il est extrêmement difficile pour ces citoyens consommateurs de faire respecter leurs droits dans le cadre d'actions qui sont moins onéreuses et beaucoup plus efficaces. Est-ce que vous avez un projet 
euh, est-ce que vous allez continuer les projets qui ont été arrêtés, des projets qui sont euh, parcellaires jusqu'à maintenant, et est-ce que vous allez euh, appuyer avec toute votre force euh, que nous connaissons bien et que nous apprécions toujours euh, ce projet qui est pour le moment dans les limbes. Permettez-moi, madame, de répondre en anglais parce que j'ai toujours travaillé en anglais sur le collective redress. Je n'ai peut-être pas les, les, les bons euh, concepts euh, en français. Um, Commission President uh, Barroso has charged uh, myself uh, to work together with my colleagues responsible for consumer affairs and for competition in order to see what could be the European response on collective redress. Because we do have in Europe uh, very different uh, rules in our member states, which make it uh, difficult uh, to find in this very delicate uh, link between mostly consumers, um, the judiciary, and also uh, um, uh, uh, associations, uh, an efficient way to proceed, which on the one hand preserves the interest of the consumers, and on the other hand preserves the lifeblood of our industry. So um, we are working on a uh, report uh, on the way forward. Uh, we wanted to present this uh, report shortly. Uh, we will wait now, I suppose, for uh, the very, uh, uh, for, for a, a, a quick, um, uh, no, wait, wait. We are waiting now for the new Uh, Commissioner for Consumer Rights uh, to be in place uh, in order to proceed uh, on this way and to see what we are proposing uh, to uh, the uh, European Parliament uh, in order to proceed uh, with a European way of, um, uh, of collective redress. One thing is sure, it will not be an American style Um, action uh, uh, which we will implement in Europe. But how we are going to proceed, that I will need to discuss then with the new Commissioner who replaces Commissioner Daly. I have two more <coughs> requests for the floor. Are you prepared to take these still? Or is short it ones, yes. very short ones? Madam, and uh, perhaps we can collect the two and then you apply. Okay? Madame Président, je me présente, je m'appelle Shabnam Mono, je viens du barreau de Paris, euh, je suis avocate médiatrice. Et aujourd'hui, je voudrais vous parler donc euh, de l'articulation de la charte des droits fondamentaux dans la médiation. Parce que je vous donne un, un exemple de la cour d'appel de Paris où j'interviens, où j'ai des mandats de médiation, sur 12 000 affaires en chambre sociale, il y aura sur une année 200 médiations. Donc aujourd'hui, ce que l'on constate, c'est que les professionnels du droit considèrent la médiation comme quelque chose qui ne leur paraît pas recommandable pour eux et pour leurs clients. Donc ce que je crois, que si on veut développer la médiation dans le droit communautaire, il faut structurer la médiation pour que les professionnels considèrent cela comme un outil satisfaisant comme un outil pertinent de l'état de droit. Aujourd'hui, la justice est un dispositif pertinent de l'état de droit car nous avons des juges indépendants et de qualité. Et il faut qu'on donne la même visibilité, la même structure à la médiation. Sinon, la médiation continuera à être un dispositif mou et euh, qui... Euh, allégé. Et je crois qu'il y a un véritable avenir. Je ne veux pas plus développer, euh, le prendre de temps. Merci, Madame la Présidente, de votre écoute. Merci beaucoup pour, être, pour avoir été bref. Diana Wallace, please. Thank you very much, Commissioner. In fact, my question concerns the same matter. It was wonderful to hear your um, words about mediation and I truthfully believe this is a very good way forward.
but there is a, a problem that has partially been referred to in Articles 4 and 9 of the Directive, uh, which merely encourage member states uh, either to, to, to use mediation or to give information about where it is in, uh, available. While that remains merely an encouragement, I have a suspicion uh, that very little will happen on the uh, national level and that it will need a little more uh, from the European level to really push this forward. And I wonder if you see the possibility to do that before the end of this Commission mandate. Thank you. C'est très intéressant d'entendre quelqu'un qui travaille dans ce métier de dire que sur 12 000 cas, il y en a seulement 200 qui ont eu recours à la médiation. Ça montre que la chose ne fonctionne vraiment pas. Parce que si vous... 12 200, il n'y a pas, pas d'analogie possible. Ça veut dire que la médiation n'est pas entrée dans les mœurs et aussi longtemps qu'elle n'entre pas dans les mœurs, aussi longtemps qu'on euh, ne pousse pas, c'est-à-dire on n'offre pas aux citoyens la médiation comme un instrument beaucoup plus rapide et beaucoup plus efficace euh, par rapport à euh, un cas devant euh, la justice traditionnelle, ça ne marchera pas. Vous savez que la directive sur la médiation, euh, au départ, prévoyait la médiation uniquement pour des cas transfrontaliers. Il y a pas mal d'États membres qui ont choisi de l'inclure aussi dans l'État membre. Le Luxembourg vient de faire une loi, l'Italie a fait une loi depuis assez longtemps. J'ai discuté avec la, la ministre de, de la Justice italienne qui, qui vraiment est d'avis que pour désengorger les cours, il serait très important d'avoir un renforcement de la médiation. Quant à moi, sur les législations qui sont sur la table et qui concernent les consommateurs, j'ai mis la médiation dans les nouvelles législations européennes. Par exemple, dans le droit européen des contrats, la médiation est une obligation première pour résoudre un problème. Bien sûr, si la médiation n'aboutit pas, il doit toujours y avoir la possibilité d'aller en justice. Donc ça, ça c'est absolument clair. La médiation n'élimine pas la justice, elle essaye de la désengorger. Je vais voir avec Madame Wallis sur les articles 4 et 9, vous avez dit de la directive, comment on pourrait euh, aboutir, parce que l'expérience doit nous montrer euh, si nous devons aller un pas plus loin et euh, si je devrais en parler au ministre de la Justice. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner Reding, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, for this discussion round. Um, thanks once again, very cordially, very warm thanks for having come and for having highlighted how important in fact, all that is for the citizen, and uh, I think one sentence uh, in your speech is very important, that it is important to uh, create this level of mutual confidence at the level of citizens. We always refer to this at the level of the ju judges and the, uh, the legal professionals, but we have to do that as well at the level of citizens. Bon courage for all your endeavors, and thank you.